أنا سامية خوري خلقاني ببيروت عربي ولا انجلش؟ اه يي صحيح نسيت خربطتيني انت عم تحكيني بالعربي لا يلا ماي نيم از سامية خوري اي واز بورن ان بيروت ان اي ميدل كلاس فاميلي اي اي ام ذا ايلدست اوف فور تشيلدرن وي ار ثري جيرلز اند ا بوي Uh, my parents, uh, my father worked in a uh, company, uh, import-export company, and my mother used to work before she got married. She was a teacher. Uh, after she got married, she uh, was a homemaker. I went to school to, uh, in a um, all-girls school, and uh, I was uh, very good in school since the beginning. Uh, I was always ranked on the top, at the top of my class. Uh, my um, parents were very encouraging uh, for education. They wanted us all to be educated, and they, their primary goal was to, for us to be really highly educated. Uh, so uh, this was a good environment for me and uh, since I was almost three years old I knew I wanted to be a doctor. You know my grandmother used to live with us and when uh, the doctor came to visit us I would just stay there and uh, watch him and uh, I loved the smell of medicines. So this was my goal since childhood I knew what I wanted to do. Uh, and uh, in school, as I said, I did well, and uh, even uh, at the high school when I took the baccalaureate, uh, I ranked first in Lebanon, uh, so this was uh, very helpful to uh, uh, be uh, admitted to the university later. Uh, so the, um, you know, my, uh, my brother and my sisters were all, uh, again, uh, they liked school and we all are uh, very avid readers, so uh, we used to read a lot. Uh, unfortunately, during my high school, the Lebanese uh, civil war started, so that was a not so, so good a time, uh, especially that there was one year when uh, we stayed home for the whole year, so we missed a whole year of school. So this was a tough time, but uh, during that time, I uh, kept reading, and uh, you know, I actually finished the curriculum for the for the year after be <laughs> before we started. You know, uh, people tend to befriend similar kind of people. So my friends were all again. Um, people who like to read and who like to, uh, to study, and so we encourage each other. Uh, even during uh, uh, the last year of high school where uh, we were studying for the baccalaureate, we uh, did a retreat uh, with two of my friends and you know, we spent the whole month studying together. So um, uh, this is you know, uh, an important aspect because you know, friends are, sometimes can lead you astray, but um, we, I had good friends and, uh, you know, good supportive family. You know, one of the problems is uh, obviously the situation in Lebanon with the war and uh, uh, the lack of electricity. Sometimes we used to study <laughs> on, <laughs> with a candlelight uh, and uh, disruptions in the school, disruptions in the curriculum. So these were the biggest problems that we faced. Uh, also, at some point, uh, my father was uh, hit by a sniper and uh, he almost died. And uh, uh, so we had, uh, you know, some medical issues after that. Uh, but um, against all this, I continued to strive to uh, uh, achieve my goal, which is to be admitted to the American University of Beirut because I uh, wanted to go to the U.S. and specialize. I received some support from my uncle, other family members for my tuition uh, at the university. You know, I also got some scholarships while I was at the university, so that really helped. Mm -hmm. 
living through the war uh, highlighted the importance of medical care. Uh, and uh, I remember there are some times when uh, we were under bombs and uh, hiding under the stairs uh, and I would be thinking, oh my God, I'm supposed to be a doctor, but I'm not a doctor yet. And how, what, what am I going to do if somebody gets hurt? I don't know what to do. So uh, it, it, you know, it increased my interest. It increased my um, drive to become a physician. I wouldn't say frustrated. I, I would say the life is always full of obstacles and we tend to either you know give up or we can pursue our goals and I think obstacles are there for us to become stronger and uh, I, I don't think there was something that prevented me from going forward. You know, as a woman in the Middle East, it's uh, sometimes difficult uh, to pursue uh, career goals. Uh, society is always asking, you know, so what are, why do you want to be a doctor? You're going to hang your uh, uh, degree on the wall and uh, as you cook. Uh, but my parents were very supportive, so they d did not allow people to um, you know, discourage me. And I did not allow them to discourage me. I didn't listen to anyone. So I trained, uh, I did my undergraduate training at the American University of Beirut, where I also obtained my medical degree. After that, I moved to the US, where I specialized in neurology at Case Western Reserve University in Ohio. Then I went to the uh, Harvard uh, University, where I uh, did my uh, training in uh, neuroimmunology uh, with uh, Dr. Howard Weiner, uh, where I st started doing basic research as well as clinical training in multiple sclerosis. Currently, I am a tenured professor at the American University of Beirut. I am the uh, head of the Abu Haidar Neuroscience Institute and the head of the uh, NAMI and Therese Tommy Multiple Sclerosis Center. My plan is to continue um, helping patients and uh, uh, doing research in the field of MS, uh, multiple sclerosis, so that I can eventually we can reach a uh, way to stop this disease for patients. As you may know, multiple sclerosis is an autoimmune disease. It is a disease where the immune system fights against myelin and produces inflammation in the brain and the spinal cord. And this is what causes its symptoms. When I started uh, with my training in MS, we had no treatment whatsoever for MS. And since then, there have been many achievements and several medications are available. So now we have like, I don't know, 18 to 20 new medications uh, that are available to, for this disease. Uh, the medications treat, uh, prevent the uh, acute exacerbations, prevent the attacks of MS, but they do not cure the disease. So we still don't have a cure for MS. Uh, it is considered a chronic disease, so you have to live with this disease. And, um, however, because of these treatments, the patients can live a normal life and uh, we have extended the, the period of time where they can live a very productive life. Uh, the, the, con the concentration of research at this time is to find a treatment or uh, to really significantly slow down the progressive phase of the disease. The disease becomes, first starts with attacks, relapses, and then at the, uh, after several years becomes progressive. So where there's accumulation of disability that gradually becomes worse and worse without attacks. And this is the part of the disease where we don't have very effective treatments. So all the research these days is focused on finding treatments for this progressive phase. Some of my research uh, was uh, focused on um, cells in the brain called the microglia. These are the cells that are the um, 
scavengers of the brain, so they are the ones that take up the uh, debris and uh, the dead cells and they protect the brain. And sometimes they become hyperactivated, they become inflamed chronically. And this is what happens in the chronic disease. The microglia become chronically activated and they cause this persistent inflammation in the brain that causes the progression of symptoms. MS is a complicated disease and the medications that we use for MS are, uh, you know, work on the immune system and they have side effects. So the importance of creating a multidisciplinary center is very high. Uh, this is why I created the MS Center here in Lebanon, which is a multidisciplinary uh, clinic where the nurses are specialized, the pharmacist is specialized, the, all the treating team is specialized to treat these patients. And we see MS and other related diseases similar to MS or other demyelinating diseases uh, so that the patient can get uh, full comprehensive uh, uh, care at the center, um, including, you know, where we take care of their um, depression, which is very common in MS. We uh, take care of other aspects of their disease, you know, we refer them for the uh, physical therapy. So it's the approach is multidisciplinary and it is specialized, which is why um, I think it's important to have this idea that it, it needs a specialized treatment center. Similar to having somebody with cancer, you don't refer them to a general practitioner, you refer them to a cancer specialist. I think MS is becoming a, a, such a complicated disease with medications that are very um, difficult to handle sometimes, uh, so that we need specialized care. You know, there's been a lot of interest in viruses in MS for many, many years, and uh, there was a lot of uh, research on different viruses, suggestion that this virus may cause MS or that virus may cause MS. But eventually it looks like uh, there is a high likelihood and the risk of MS becomes higher if somebody has contracted Epstein-Barr virus, so the virus that causes mononucleosis. So it's not a direct cause of MS, but it is one of the risk factors for MS. Other risk factors include low vitamin D. Uh, and one of the things that we have been doing uh, since I came to Lebanon is to raise awareness about the importance of vitamin D. And also smoking is another risk factor for MS. So again, we uh, talk a lot about stopping smoking, preventing smoking. Smoking is one of the risk factors for MS and also causes the disease to be worse. So we have modifiable risk factors, the vitamin D, smoking, uh, and we have risk factors that are genetic, but these are a small part of the risk. So the risk is mostly environmental, not a genetic. The genetic part is only part of it. من الأبحاث اللي بلشناها بالسنتر عنا هي عن الفيتامين دي مثل ما قلت لك إنه الفيتامين دي له علاقة مهمة ونقص الفيتامين دي له علاقة بحدوث مرض التصلب المتعدد واحدة من الأشياء اللي نعرفها أو اللي عملناها بالبحث تبعنا لقينا إنه عنا بالشرق الأوسط وخاصة بلبنان الليفل تبع الفيتامين دي واطي عند الجميع مش بس عند المرض هذا شيء مستغرب كلنا وقت نعمل فحص بيطلع انه منه سفشن يعني نعم. منه كافي نعم شو الاسباب آه عندنا بالجينات تبعولنا ما منع... ما بنقدر نعمل فيتامين دي بتعرف مثل ما بتعرف الفيتامين دي بي... بينعمل بالجلد لما بتعرض للشمس سو so... مع انه نحن يعني بلد الشمس مزبوط. بس نحن ما بنقدر نعمل الفيتامين دي مزبوط سو so كل العالم عندها نقص بالفيتامين دي بس اللي لاحظنا انه مرضى التصلب المتعدد عندهم الليفل تبعهم اوطى بكثير من الباقي العالم باقي الناس 
وحده من الاشياء اللي كنا عم ندرسها بهذا البحث هو شو علاقه الفيتامين دي ليفل بالتفكير وعملنا دراسه عطينا البيشنتس اللي عندهم نقص بالفيتامين دي والبيشنتس اللي عندهم منيح الفيتامين دي عملنا مقارنه بعد ثلاث اشهر من ما رجعنا لهم الليفل للي عندهم نقص رجع لهم الليفل الطبيعي لقينا انه تحسن التفكير سرعه التفكير والذاكره <تصفيق> تحسنت سو so, هذا كان uh, شيء كثير مهم uh, انه لقينا انه الفيتامين دي بيساعد على محافظه على الكوجنيشن As you know, multiple sclerosis is a chronic disease, so it is not curable. However, when I started in the field, uh, we had absolutely no treatments. And uh, a lot of the research that we did in animal models and in other uh, uh, areas led to the development of several therapies. Uh, I did not develop all these therapies myself, but uh, the scientific community in uh, the field has now a lot of Uh, therapies available to stop the inflammation and to prevent the progression of the disease. Uh, so I think this is a, a, an important milestone in this uh, in this field. Actually, it's not a different treatment method, but the way we set up the MS Center is uh, to have a multidisciplinary team. And I think it's important uh, for the patients with MS to have this Uh, ability to see uh, people who are specialized in MS. So we have the nurses who are specialized, the pharmacist, even the social worker is dedicated to seeing patients with MS. So I think the approach uh, to the disease is uh, a little bit different. And also uh, the integration of research and clinical care is very important. Uh, research is part of uh, the evolution of uh, the care for the patients. and the patients appreciate this and they like being involved in research related to MS. There is no specific test that tells you there is MS. MS diagnosis depends on a variety of clinical presentations, um, laboratory testing, as well as uh, taking up spinal fluid and MRI. And based on all of these, we can make the diagnosis. In some patients, uh, and we see some of those patients um, more often these days, th there is something called radiologically isolated syndrome. So in these patients, they do an MRI for some other reasons, and they, you find lesions that are typical for MS. And they have no symptoms. So those patients have a risk of becoming MS, but it's not very high. Uh, it's about 50% of those patients will develop MS in about 10 years. So uh, in this case, we follow the patients and make sure that if they develop any symptom, then we can make the diagnosis and start them on treatment early. As you may be aware, the uh, brain in humans contains cells that are called neural stem cells. And these cells are supposed to uh, restore or regenerate some new neurons and other cells of the brain. However, what we see in MS is that these cells don't do their job. They don't proliferate and replace other cells. So some of the research that I did was to try to determine how the inflammation is preventing the stem cells for, from regenerating and uh, correcting uh, the deficits. Uh, so uh, I think this is a, uh, an area that is actively being investigated by many people in the, uh, in the field. And uh, uh, eventually, when we find out how to trigger the cells to replace uh, neurons, it will be a very uh, important discovery.
Unfortunately, uh, a lot of diseases uh, become worse uh, in patients who are affected by COVID. And uh, the same is true for MS patients because they are being immunosuppressed. And uh, what we found is that patients who have been on uh, uh, one of the uh, more severe immunosuppressive therapies, such as B-cell direct therapy, have a much worse uh, disease with COVID. And actually, a few patients have died uh, because of the COVID, uh, and they had been on this B-cell therapy. But in general, most of the patients uh, did well. Even uh, some of them uh, had been infected, and they recovered uh, completely. The interaction between the stem cells that we have in our brain and the immune system is very important. And one, some of my research focuses on this, and we found that the immune cells can impair the ability of the stem cells to make new cells and to repair. So stopping the immune system from doing this uh, and allowing the stem cells that we have, the endogenous stem cells, to recover their potential for repair is very important. And uh, we noticed that some patients have a better potential for repair than others. So some patients have attacks, they uh, have functional deficits, but they recover much better than others. And we're really investigating uh, the difference between people who have a lot of uh, good repair potential versus those who don't, don't have this repair potential. There's a lot of interest in stem cells and every time people hear about stem cells they think that this is the cure-all of all the diseases. And there are some actually some uh, people who are taking advantage of this and uh, telling people that you know we have stem cell treatments and you can uh, be cured and it's it's only a money-making proposition because there aren't any actual treatment that uh, cure the disease at this point science these days is an effort a collaborative effort so we need many people to be collaborating to advance knowledge. Uh, the technology is advancing very, very rapidly, so uh, collaboration is very important. I do have many collaborations, including, uh, most importantly, collaborations with my previous uh, uh, group at Harvard, uh, at the Brigham and Women's Hospital. Uh, I have collaborations with the National Institute of Health and with people in uh, Europe, uh, in uh, Lyon, France, in Barcelona. Uh, and uh, so these are collaborations that reveal uh, how um, putting together larger number of patients, larger uh, databases uh, will uh, lead to better understanding of the disease. Our research shows in Lebanon we have like 89% of the people are positive. So, uh, but in MS patients, it's 99.9%. So uh, uh, there is a, a push now to try to find a vaccine for this virus as a way to prevent the disease. I wouldn't say it's invented. I mean, you know, we, we are applying a, a, a way to treat patients, which is uh, uh, the multidisciplinary approach. And also uh, another thing that I applied when I started this MS Center is to include research in patient care. So it's not separated. It's, you know, the, the team that takes care of the patients and the team that does the research are cooperating. And uh, the patients, uh, we have a uh, longitudinal uh, cohort now, which is called AMIR. It uh, includes almost 2,000 patients that we have been following now for 10 years. And uh, all of the, um, you know, most of the patients agree to participate in this uh, research. Uh, so they feel, actually our patients feel that they are home. They, you know, one of my patients wanted to, uh, you know, can you build a, a, a hotel here so that we can live here? So this is the importance of creating this environment where they're, they feel they are contributing to research because that will help them in the end and they also get treated and uh, taken care of. I 
I think there's a lot of support that I received from my husband uh, through the years because he was also supportive of my career and uh, he is a doctor and uh, he is a very successful doctor. He also was a recipient of the Mustafa Prize. Dear Professor Muhammad Sayak, Ashwidushan Befarmin Bari Dari of the Joyce. As we, <laughs> during our uh, career actually, it's very interesting, we would uh, sit at the dinner table and uh, you know, our kids would hear us discuss uh, you know, scientific projects. So they, are, they have grown up discussing, uh, listening to the, uh, uh, you know, uh, whatever projects we were doing. And interestingly, my husband is a uh, nephrologist, he's a transplant nephrologist, so he's also in the field of immunology. So immunology of kidney diseases. So I'm in the immunology of the CNS. So we had a lot of collaborative work together. We published several papers together. And we benefited from, uh, you know, knowledge in his field to my field, etc. cetera. So, so I think it was a very fruitful, uh, long, uh, lifelong collaboration that uh, uh, has been essential to our growth. Uh, both to his growth and my growth. And also, we would, uh, you know, like if I wrote something or I write a grant and say, do you, can you read this for me? Do you have any suggestions? Or he would do the same, let me read this paper. So it, it's a very um, important part of our uh, growth and scientific career together. Yes, is, uh, she is also a physician. And she is, uh, this year she will be starting her uh, research uh, projects also during her uh, specialization. I actually didn't really know about the Mustafa Prize uh, until uh, recently uh, when my husband, Muhammad Zayikh, was uh, awarded the prize uh, two years ago, I guess. Uh, since then, um, they involved me in the, um, uh, in the community a little bit, uh, the scientists who are a part of this community, and uh, I learned a bit more about the prize. I guess uh, it's important for Lebanon uh, to be represented uh, uh, in this award because we uh, have a tendency to export our brains uh, to other countries and uh, you know people are very successful everywhere else but uh, it's important for us to actually have the scientific contribution coming out from Lebanon so that's one part part of my goal here is to increase uh, research uh, in Lebanon and to increase the uh, uh, knowledge about research in the students, in the uh, community, uh, to have the people participate in research and uh, contribute. Uh, uh, the most important thing is uh, creating collaborations among scientists in the region. Uh, we need to have uh, a lot of collaborations because science these days is not an individual uh, effort. It is a, uh, a group effort. So scientists have to come together and do uh, more uh, important research, more significant research. So I think it's important for the uh, region to have all the scientists come together and start uh, collaborating. Uh, for the students, um, I, I, um, part of the award is to uh, fund some uh, student projects. So that would be important also to uh, uh, support uh, a fellowship or a, a project for a student. 
the most important advice I give students is to be persistent and not to give up uh, when they face obstacles. So they need to be um, resilient and learn from the mistakes. We will, during our life, we face a lot of rejections. You know, we apply for a grant, they, we don't get the grant. We apply, we send a paper, it gets rejected. So that's part of the growth. That's part of uh, getting better. And uh, so it's important to be resilient and to be persistent to achieve the goals. advice for the government. <laughs> uh, I think, you know, the most successful countries or the most advanced countries are the ones that recognize the importance of research. And those that really put in uh, uh, money towards research. Uh, you, a country cannot become successful if they don't recognize the importance of research endeavors. So I think People need to understand that it's not the immediate rewards, it's you have to invest. You have to invest in the future of the country, you have to invest in the infrastructure, in the students, in the, in the education, uh, so that you can become uh, important and lead to something significant in the, in the world. as I mentioned before. So uh, nothing gets done uh, uh, without collaboration. Uh, I have continued collaborating with my group at Harvard. Uh, I have uh, a lot of collaborations with people at UCSF, with uh, people in Spain, in uh, Barcelona, in uh, people in, in France, in Lyon. Uh, so we have multiple uh, collaborative uh, efforts ongoing. Uh, and uh, also we collaborate with uh, the Minactrims group, which is a group in the MENA region, uh, where uh, all the people who are interested in MS uh, come together. So we, we do have uh, a lot of ongoing collaborations that help uh, push forward uh, the treatment of this disease. I think getting the um, all of them are important because they are milestones. So you achieve one milestone and then it helps promote your career a little bit more. And then you achieve a second milestone and another and another. Uh, you're, uh, I wasn't working towards getting a, an award. I was working to achieve something in knowledge and to reach something in, uh, you know, some particular area of MS, uh, but getting the awards would help move you to the next step, to the next level. So I have received the Alpha Omega Alpha uh, Honor Medical Society membership. I was uh, also um, a recipient of the Kuwait Prize, International Prize for Immunology Research. I received the Gold Award for uh, AB Alumni Association. Uh, uh, more recently, I have received the King Salman Prize for Disability Research. Uh, I was uh, also um, given a, a, a chair uh, at Harvard, the Jack Sadie Breakstone Professorship uh, at Harvard. This is uh, called the Harvard Chair that I received uh, for 25 years of service at uh, Brigham and Women's Hospital and Harvard Medical School. They give you the option of a regular chair or a rocking chair. So I selected the rocking chair, uh, which I transported uh, back uh, from the U.S. with me to Lebanon.
Uh, no, except that, uh, you know, I was worried that it will be, uh, in, uh, you know, injured or uh, destroyed during the transport, but actually it, it was fine and nothing happened to it. Uh, the interesting part about the chair is that it has a genealogy and that I'm supposed to, uh, you know, write uh, the next uh, owner of the chair on the genealogy so I can give it to my uh, one of my children and they can give it to their children. We have two kids. So each, one, <laughs> each one will get one chair. Yeah.